What is up guys, Rasputin Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be taking a look at the brand new Tommy's Matchbook exotic auto rifle just added into Destiny 2 with Season of the Worthy. Unlike most other reviews, we're not playing one Crucible game. Instead, we're taking this weapon with a full fire team all utilizing it through the entirety of the largest raid in Destiny's history, Last Wish to see how this performs in a true endgame environment. And so, let's get started. First things first, we gotta take a look at this weapon. So, the intrinsic perk is Ignition Trigger. Sustained fire with this weapon overheats it, increasing damage but burning the user. It also has another unique perk called Heat Sink. Overheat damage is reduced while not aiming down sights. So essentially, this weapon has a massive 100 round magazine, after you continuously fire it, it's going to light on fire, damaging you but increasing the damage substantially. As soon as you stop firing, the bonus damage goes away and the burn effect stops. Interestingly, this is something a lot of people don't know, but you can actually continuously fire it and it will only do shield damage. As you can see, it will not kill you. It will just get you flashing red and stop. But most damage phases do have incoming damage from other enemies from the boss and so on. So if you can somewhat get into a position where you're not taking damage, this thing is just pure extra damage. And that's really interesting. But how does it perform in that very first encounter against Kali. Well, against the normal ads as you're holding the plates, it's phenomenal. It is a, a great auto rifle to use. You can easily get overwhelmed though and you can just take too much damage and then, you know, get a swipe from a thrall and suddenly you're dead. That is something to keep in mind. It should be noted that for the damage phase, obviously we're going ham with this weapon and how could you go more ham than to combine it with the Actium War Rig exotic chest piece for the Titan, which has the exotic perk auto loading link. Think. Steadily reload a portion of your equipped auto rifle or machine guns magazine from reserves and you'll see in the background gameplay I start firing and I basically don't stop. Now another good thing is that in most damage phases you're using a well of radiance and that is going to completely counteract the burning damage from this gun. So all six people with the matchbook ramping up damage. I've got the war rig. How much damage can we do? Not that much. This weapon is capable of taking away, at its best, about a third of Kali's health. Now you can see though when we did end up wiping that me with my Actium War Rig did do substantially more damage than everyone else. The problem is that six War Rigs means that uh, there's no well, there's no buffs, anything like that, and that can be super problematic. You want a well on every single part of this damage phase. And so a few people using it can definitely increase the damage, but frankly, we're talking about trying to maximize something that shouldn't really be maximized. This weapon's damage output was frankly not impressive in this encounter, and therefore I've got to give it a six out of 10. It is certainly above average. It's very good against the adds. It's good for a primary weapon, but it's trash compared to so many other options. With all of that being said, Kali is notoriously tricky. How will this weapon fare in the second counter against Shuro Chi? Here, you have to deal enough damage to do one sixth of her health or your team wipes. So can this weapon do it? As you can see, it actually can. And it could every single time. There was no wipes, no hiccups. We were able to reach that damage threshold on Kali every single time just using this weapon, of course, assisted by uh, buffs and debuffs from kind of the usual stuff. So I was initially not very impressed with this weapon's performance, but you know, it's performing pretty decently on Shiro Chi and for a primary dealing enough damage to get that threshold, that's certainly not bad. Now, the question of how its performance fares against adds is a really interesting one. On the one hand, it shreds. I mean, it's 100 rounds in the magazine, auto rifle that does way more damage than a normal auto rifle. 
but the fact that it also hurts you can put you in some tricky scenarios. When, especially you're in this encounter, the ads are numerous and they're all shooting at you. And so it's pretty easy to get overzealous with this weapon and pay the price. So actually like burst firing this weapon to keep yourself from getting too low was kind of the strategy that we all employed. And it worked pretty well, but you aren't getting the bonus damage when you do that. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna have to give this weapon a seven out of 10 in this encounter. It reached the threshold, it was decent against the adds, definitely above average, not top tier though. But moving on from there, we have another boss fight against Morgoth. And Morgoth is kind of the requirement for a good damaging weapon in PvE. If you can't one phase Morgoth, What's the point, am I right? So, can the Tommy's matchbook actually do that? Again, we have the beginning encounter against ads, and I would say pretty much everything I said about the Shiro Chi encounter and ads pretty much also applies here. It is kind of nice in this encounter that most of the shields uh, on the enemies are gonna be solar shields, and this weapon is a solar weapon, so that's just something cool. But against actually Morgoth, we went for the one phase, and as you can see, we barely got, I have not seen a closer one phase like in my life. It said 90 and I'm pretty sure like when it said 100, we killed Morgoth. Like it was within milliseconds of wiping. So we barely, barely squeaked out the one phase. And, and that is, in my opinion, not too great. I've one phased Morgoth with a ton of weapons. You can one phase Morgoth a lot easier with the Devil's Ruin, for example, which is another primary weapon. So this is kind of hard for me to understand. This weapon isn't even doing as much damage as certain other primaries, but it hurts you. I would imagine this weapon should be like slaying out against Morgoth and stuff. So hard to understand that one but therefore it's gonna get a six out of 10. It's gotta be above average because it did do the one phase, but it just so barely did it, I can't go higher than a six. However, moving on to the next encounter, we have Vault. And this is always a really interesting one. So many people skip ahead to see what it does against Riven, but I always think Vault is a huge indicator of how good a weapon is because there's no boss fight. It's just normal adds and then some chunky knights. And if you can overcome that, if a weapon performs well in Vault, it usually performs well in average activities, strikes, um, reckoning, that t style of stuff, menagerie. So so how did it perform here? Well, again, you have a lot of adds and therefore you're going to have to employ certain healing mechanisms. You're being shot at in so many different angles that, you know, frankly, it kind of turns out the matchbook is super good with a warlock and not as good with the other classes. Yes, the Actium War Rig is quite the combo and I did enjoy using it with that. However, the Warlock has so many healing capabilities. Just standing in a well of radiance will counteract the burning. You can put on the Devour Tree and get your health back as you're getting kills, which I think is a huge combo with this gun. The new Sanguine Alchemy exotic chess piece for the Warlock, where if you're getting kills, in a rift, it will extend the duration of that rift. All of that stuff, perfect for the Warlock. The other classes don't quite have as many healing capabilities that pair with the Tommy's matchbook. So just keep that in mind. Now against the actual knights, yeah, they're pretty chunky, but especially if we team fired, we were able to take these guys down without too much trouble. You're gonna be at risk if you're alone. I think you probably could take out one of these knights alone as long as nothing else damages you. But if you're gonna take those guys on, definitely starting the engagement with you know a shot from the mountaintop, for example, and then finishing up with the matchbook is probably a good idea. So overall, I'm gonna give this weapon a 7.5 out of 10 here. I think it was certainly above average. I did enjoy using it. If you are using especially a warlock and you can combo with this weapon, I think it becomes actually pretty darn viable. However, it's time to move on to the big damage phase. The damage phase to end all others against Big Mama Riven and obviously we going for the cheese just to see how much damage this can actually output in a short period of time. And 
as you can see, winding up my Actium War Rig going ham, it's not that good. In fact, if we look at the damage numbers here, although I was touching 400,000, which is certainly nothing to scoff at, absolutely, for a primary weapon, that's pretty impressive, that was using the Actium specifically. Most other people were coming around 300,000 damage or less. So that is pretty average for a lot of other primary exotics out there. And this is especially an encounter where like if we were all Actium Titans, there's a lot of enemies that are shooting at you. You need those rifts and those well of radiances and so on. And therefore I've got to give it just like a five out of 10. It's pretty average. But there is one more encounter to go, the Queen's Walk encounter. And for this, you're mostly just fighting ads. If you do get teleported into the nether realm, then you will have to fight the same knights as you did uh, from the vault encounter. So here, you know, it's pretty decent. You are on the move, so you do kind of have to be concerned about your health quite a bit. You don't really have time to stand in a well uh, like most of the other encounters. So tap firing is really gonna be a thing here. Uh, if you do get teleported inside, I, I didn't for this encounter, but talking to people who did, they said it was fine and it, it functioned pretty similarly to how it did in the vault and therefore I think it gets a 7 out of 10 certainly above average for this encounter it's just functioning as an above rate auto rifle and therefore last up we have the overall rating and I think considering there was some 7 7.5s and then some down to 5s a fair rating is a 6.5 for this new exotic overall during this raid certainly above average but nowhere near breaking into the top tier nowhere near the top tier even for other primary weapons and so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this interesting. And if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.